if there were justice for Trayvon Mart, there would not be a Freddie G. If there were justice for Freddie G, there would not be a T Rice. Though justice for T. Rice, there would not be a Eric G. Though justice for Eric G, there would not be a Sandra B. If there were justice for Sandra B, there would not be an Alton Sterling. If there is not, there is not any justice for Alton Sterling. The next person could be a you. Or they could even be me. We die even in police custody. Hands up, don't shoot. We still die. Fall on the ground. Not making our way back up. We die. Barely an adolescent. We die. Shortness of breath. I can't breathe. We die. Skittles in one hand, your favorite pop in the next, we die. Legally trying to hustle with a wife and five children at home, we still die. So what makes you think being educationally secure secures your life? What makes you think that your socioeconomic status will secure your life? What makes you think that your background will back you up when the 5-0 comes to try to check your truck? What makes you think that someone who punks politics, who are trying to push up on you and trying to play you, will somehow be put to a halt? Because you have now pursued higher education. What makes you think that you would have time to stop someone who's approaching you with their bias and prejudice? The nature that raves the head like a beast. To say it's not about the content of your character, it's more about the color of your skin. What happens when you are in the car and you've been pulled over and it seems like the night has now darkened over the past 30 seconds of the time you were pulled over. And now even the flashlight in the hand of the cop does not lighten the color of your skin. What happens? What happens when you try to reach in your wallet for your license and you still get shot? What happens? What happens when you can't find your alumnus card to prove that you went to a predominantly Caucasian school, an Ivy League school that shows that you are well-mannered, high-achieving, Afrocentric person? What happens when you don't have time for that? What happens when it plays in your mind and it cycles in your mind that Darren Wilson was laid off, paid administrative leave, still getting paid by support groups, even if they're saying they're not paying him, still being paid by support groups, private groups that, and private sectors that are still funding them. What happens when Big Dog Z who's still getting high fives, tried to sell the same weapon that was used to kill Trayvon Mart. What happens when you've already seen many people being pushed through that pipeline to prison, from the projects to prison, and you know your homeboys, Baba and Rufus, who were purposely set up by the same people that were supposed to be entrusted with keys to protect, but have now become pimps in the system that's now persecuting us. What happens? What happens? What happens? What happens when your hashtag all lives matter 
truly matters. But right now, your focus is off what has happened to you. When you're missing that it matters to him, it matters to her, it matters to us. What happens when your silence have now become louder than the noise you've been making over the gorilla issue? When your silence now seems to scream louder than when you were talking about the Trump issue. When now your silence seems to now be echoing in the hearts of those who are hurting. <laughs> and you can't even mutter one word, one status. You can't even join up and rub the back of those who are not hunched over because they're tired of being beaten, battered, and they're tired of being belittled by those who claim that they're bearing their arms and that they have a listening heart. What happens when the movement now have been put in a way that seems so divisive, but it's not. It's only to build the courage of those who are now becoming trapped, gripped by fear, losing hope to a system that seems to be set up against them. What happens? What do you do, prophet, minister, servant, when true tragedy seems to come against us and you don't even have a timely word in season, what happens to a people that's not feeling the support? The people become overwhelmed with emotions that will soon be expressed in a diabolical way. But you still have hope because we still have hope for healing. And in understanding if you help us not march and protest, but help us to mobilize, then our people will bring healing to generations. Our nation will start to grow. Our nation will begin to build itself up. Our nation will become a nation that will not only pray, but a nation that will then progress. And in the process of what's going on, we will see that there is a purpose not behind the loss, but it's a purpose behind the pain.